Hi, in this video we'll talk about AWS Load Balancer Controller, a Kubernetes controller for elastic load balancers. So what exactly is this AWS Load Balancer Controller? If you have applications deployed on Kubernetes clusters, you would often need a way to expose those to external traffic. For that, you would ideally need some kind of load balancer. That's what AWS Load Balancer Controller is for. It manages AWS Elastic Load Balancers for a Kubernetes cluster. The controller provisions the following resources. If you create a Kubernetes ingress resource, it will provision an application load balancer on AWS. On the other hand, if you create a Kubernetes service of type load balancer, it would provision a network load balancer on AWS. It enables you to simplify operations and save costs by sharing an ALB across multiple applications in your KHS cluster. If you have pods running on AWS Fargate, it will also allow you to use NLB, which is the network load balancer to target such pods. So how do we install this AWS load balancer controller? I'm on this Amazon documentation page, which describes how to install the controller using default options. It also talks about prerequisites which are required for the installation. It's a pretty detailed step-by-step -step guide, which you can use to install the controller on your EKS cluster. I'm including this link to the documentation in the description of this video. Now, once the AWS load balancer controller is installed, let's say you want to deploy a resource ingress resource like so. Let me zoom it a bit so that it's more clear. So you have a, re a ingress resource like so. The API version is networking KHS IO slash V1. The kind is ingress. It has the standard metadata name labels attribute. There's also annotations attribute. We'll cover this in a minute. We'll come back to it in a second. The main thing to focus here is the spec rules where it specifies the host and the path details for the application. So what this essentially means is, let's say on the browser, if you have a request which says myawesomeapp.mywebsite.com, followed by slash products, then send the request to the backend Kubernetes service named my products app running on port 8080. Similarly, if the request comes to myawesomeapp.mywebsite.com slash accounts, then send the request to the backend service by the name my accounts app on port 8080. For any other request coming on myawesomeapp.mywebsite.com, send the request to the backend service by the name my awesome app running on port 8080. Now coming back to the annotations, we, we can define a bunch of annotations within the annotations attribute. Now the documentation for the same is listed on this. So I've included this link in the description of the video. So this lists all the annotations that are supported by the AWS load balancer controller. If you click on any of these, it will present you with the description of what each of these mean. Now coming back to our ingress YAML. So the annotations that we have are the Kubernetes IO ingress class as the ALB. That's because we want to create an application load balancer. Then ALB ingress Kubernetes IO scheme is internet facing. So this means that we have an internet facing load balancer. Then the target type is IP. You can have either the IP or the instance uh, specified as the target type. Then you can define the tags that you want. Now, if you are running the application using HTTPS, you would need a certificate for that. Uh, you, you can specify the ARN of the AWS ACM certificate using this annotation. Next, we have the listen ports, which defines which ports the load balancer should listen on. So we have configured 443, which is the HTTPS and 80, which is the HTTP port. Next, we have SSL redirect, which means that if there's a request coming on HTTP, simply redirect the request 
to HTTPS, which is 443, so that you have a secure communication. Now, once you have your ingress defined and you deploy this on your Kubernetes cluster using kubectl apply, the AWS load balancer controller will automatically create an application load balancer based based on the spec dot rules that you have specified in this YAML file. Now let's dig a bit deeper to see how the AWS load balancer controller works. So in this diagram, we have a Kubernetes cluster with the API server and a bunch of pods deployed on series of nodes. The pod C represents the accounts application. The pod B represents the products application and pod A represents the generic application. In the diagram, we see a series of sequences marked within circle with a number inside. So we have a sequence one, two, three, four, and five. In step one, the controller continuously watches the API server for ingress events. When it finds ingress resources, which we deploy through kubectl apply command, it starts creating the AWS resources. In step two, application load balancer is created in AWS for the ingress resource. This ALB can be internet facing or an internal one. You can even specify the subnets it's created in using the annotations in the YAML file. In step three, target groups are created for each unique Kubernetes service that we defined in the ingress resource. So in the YAML that we saw earlier, we defined three Kubernetes services, which means that three target groups would be created in AWS. In step four, listeners are created for every port defined in your ingress resource. Certificates may also be attached using the annotations as we saw in the YAML few moments back. In step five, rules are created for each path specified in your ingress resources. This ensures that the traffic to the specific path is routed to the correct Kubernetes service. Now, along with all these, in case you happen to modify the ingress resources, the controller will ensure that the AWS components created above will also be modified according to the changes made. In case you happen to delete the ingress resource itself, the controller would delete all the AWS components created as part of the ingress resource. Once you deploy your ingress resources and the controller creates the AWS components, if you go to the AWS console and check the application load balancer, you would see the rules created like so. For each host and or the path combination, you would see one rule listed. So if you see here, the if mentions the host and or the path, the then uh, points to the targets that were created which in turn routes the traffic to the corresponding Kubernetes service. So the number of rules would be based on the number of host and or the path combination that you have in your YAML file. Coming back to the YAML again, it may happen that your application has many modules and there are different teams working on each of these different modules. So each team might have their own ingress resources. Now what you'll observe is when you deploy these different ingresses, the controller would create a new application load balancer for each of these ingress resources. So you might end up with multiple application load balancers. Now application load balancer costs you money. So ideally you would like to have one application load balancer for your application serving all the different modules within that single application. Luckily, we have an annotation handy to achieve that. So that annotation is this group.name. So alb.ingress.kubernetes.io slash group.name. So when you specify the same group name for all your ingress resources, the controller would use the same application load balancer for all your ingress resources. Let's have a look at the documentation for this annotation. So I'm in the documentation for the AWS load balancer controller annotations. And we see that the group.name uh, annotation, the ingresses with the same group.name annotation will form as an explicit ingress group. 
meaning that the controller would use the same application load balancer across all your ingress resources having the same group dot name. But this comes with a security risk and it's highlighted in the documentation here. The ingress group feature should only be used when all Kubernetes users with RBAC permissions to create modify ingress resources are within the trust boundary. If you're if you turn your ingresses to belong to explicit ingress groups by adding group dot name annotation, other Kubernetes user may create or modify the ingresses to belong to the same ingress group, thus can add more rules or overwrite existing rules with higher priority to the ALB for your ingress. We'll be adding more fine grained access control in future versions. So with this security risk, please use this annotation with caution. So that's all I had in this video for AWS load balancer controller. Hope you like this video. Thanks for watching.